In the early 1960s, railroads were faced with an aging caboose fleet, and at that point, the majority of American cabooses were home-built pre-World War II and definitely starting to show their age. Companies like the International Car Company, or ICC, emerged and began building the hundreds of examples for railroads across the nation. Union Pacific finally handed off the torch for caboose building to ICC, starting with the C8 class caboose. ICC would continue building the next two runs of the C8-9 and C8-10, all of which were nearly identical, and these would be the last of the cupola-style cabooses. Athern made the announcement of the C8-8 and C8-9 cabooses in August of 2020, and dealers finally took delivery in February 2023, partnered with other ICC cabooses like the Bay Window Styles. This is the first time this Union Pacific caboose has been released in plastic form, and for the cupola-style version, only Union Pacific is offered in this run. This initial release only has two main paint schemes, the standard UP Armor Yellow, as well as the Maintenance Away Green, but many other cars may feature different safety slogan billboards on the side to give a variety of look across the run. These cars do feature DCC and sound versions, as well as a more standard lights-only version, with the DCC and sound version MSRP coming in at $150. Today, we'll be looking at Union Pacific 906-251. This prototype started off life as a pool service caboose before getting repainted into Maintenance Away Green in the 1990s. Like most cabooses, this example features two brake wheels, but viewing the underside of the car, the brake piston points towards the end with the red handle swing gate, so this will be referred to as the B end. Taking a look at the A end of the car, the car body is filled with several metal separately applied details. Most of these include several grab irons at different areas of the end cage. The windows on the end of the car body are very nicely done. These windows feature a yellow accent painting cage on the outside, as well as sporting a green end cage that is fitted to the interior of the car. The end cage of the caboose is nicely done as well, being molded in a single plastic piece, but is very finely done, as well as includes several accent paintings on different aspects of the details. Another metal detail that's a little bit duffer to see is the slotted floorboards on the end of the car body. This is a road-specific detail. Other cabooses may feature the Morton-style slotting. Up on the end cage is one of the brake wheel assemblies, that's molded in the end cage and has the separately applied plastic brake wheel handle and the plastic chain running down to the underside linkage. Mounted to the side steps is the coupler cup bar that attaches to the underside of the draft gear box. The coupler for this piece of equipment is the McHenry Scale Plastic Coupler, the standard of all Athern and Genesis products. And this model is rounded out with the trainline air hose molded in a plastic piece with the silver accent painting for the glad hands. Moving to the side of the car, the main spotting feature for these ICC built cabooses is the eight body panels welded together, forming the car body sides. Closer towards the ground, you can see the etched metal side steps that have the accent painting backboards and also have printing on them as well. But up on the side of the body panel is more of the wire grab irons. This one is sloping downwards on the curve and has the painted white accent painting. While down here, it's a good chance to take a look at these outside swing hanger or OSH trucks, and these were updated to the roller bearing style with the typical Athern style of having the animated roller bearing caps. Up on the sides of the car body are their windows allowing viewing into the interior of the caboose. These are fitted with a nice silver metallic outline to model the natural aluminum window frames found on the prototype. On the underside of the car body is the large battery or toolbox that would house the batteries for electrical use on the caboose. Recharging those batteries would be the use of the axle-mounted Deco alternator that would use the motion of the wheels to produce the electrical current. Moving over to the B end of the caboose, there's only a very few small details to notice. The first of these was the obvious one with the red painted walkway gate that gives a clear difference between the two car body ends. Some of the smaller detail differences is a molded on piece of conduit. This was probably used for a walkway lighting on the prototype, as well as a smaller molded on fuel cap that would be used for the transfer of fuel oil for the crews in the caboose. Panning over to the top of the caboose, the large in your face detail is the silver painted smokestack on the B end of the cupola. This is a separately applied plastic piece with metal wire supports running down from either side of the smoke deflector. Up on the side of the cupola are some of the lighting features on this caboose. That is the signal lights mounted to these sides between the two windows. This caboose features a red and green LED lights. These lights will give the status of the train with the red light meaning the train is on the main and moving. And the green indication usually means that you are in the siding with switch protection on either side. 
on the end of the cupola are more of the interior cages for the cupola windows. These are painted in green and match the car body and windows. The window frames on the cupola also have a black framing looking very sharp. On the outer edges of the cupola are the side mirrors or wind deflectors allowing the crews to have the windows open without the wind rushing into the cupola. The side windows on the cupola are also similar to locomotives where they actually are sliding and allow the modeler to move the windows slightly open or sealed for operation. The cupola is fitted with several grab irons wrapping around the roof and these separately applied wire details match the green maintenance away car body paint. On the other side of the cupola is another smaller silver vent and this is going to be your toilet vent. The overall roof is fitted with several body panels that have the diagonal body panels that overhang slightly and this is one of your main spotting features for the C88 and newer designs. The other car body side is very similar to the other side with not many details and the main detail is going to be your middle window is going to be slightly smaller and this is going to be your toilet window. This one is a little bit smaller for the crew's privacy as well as it's located immediately under the toilet vent seen earlier. Flipping the car over exposes a lot of the underbody detail that's not really seen while rolling down the track. It does give a good opportunity to check out the Atherin Genesis trucks that utilize these small copper strips to pick up and provide electricity for the internal circuitry and lighting features. The wheels are 33 inch metal wheels and have the 110,000 standard treading. Some of the main braking components that we've come to know and love include the triple valve, the main air reservoir, a smaller auxiliary reservoir, the brake piston, as well as all the brake linkage between these various components. The wire detail plumbing is very nicely done with a good mixture of wire and plastic molded details. All these various components are painted in a flat black underbody finish. I did end up picking up the DCC and sound version of this caboose, so we'll go ahead and give the caboose some track power to check out the sights and sounds of this new Genesis release. The model comes in at 4 and 1 8 inches long for the car body, so the NRA recommended weight would be 3.13 ounces or 89 grams. The model actually weighed in at 3.45 ounces, a difference of 0.51 ounces to the heavy side. All of the wheels were found to be engaged to the NRA wheel gauge, and when comparing the height of the KD height gauge to the couplers, both McHenry scale plastic couplers were found at the correct height. For the scoring section of the review, the score will be broken down into several categories, each with their own point totals, adding up to 100 possible points. The model arrives in a box more closely to that of a locomotive, but overall very solid and includes spare and extra detail parts, instructions, and exploded parts diagram. The accuracy of the model is fairly well done. Atherin did a good job of getting a lot of the number and class-specific details, and thankfully lots of examples are still preserved to this day. I think the maintenance away green was more of an afterthought to the initial release as several smaller details or painting details were overlooked, but overall still pretty good. 
for this example. The paint and the decals on the model are looking great. The UP Maintenance Away Green has a smooth finish and doesn't obscure any of these smaller molded on details. The green is a little bit more of a turquoise green than the pale green found on the prototype, but this paint job seems to replicate the originally painted Maintenance Away Green and matches other Athern UP Green products as well. There was some slight fuzziness on very small painted area for the details, but these really were too small to notice unless you're looking at very specific angles, and I didn't feel it warranted taking a full point off. The details on this model live up to the Genesis name with a good mixture of plastic and metal separately applied details, and almost all the details were separately applied with very few molded on details. Some of the issues I did notice with the car were actually on the interior details, or really the lack thereof. When looking into the car, different wiring harnesses and screw heads are easily noticeable. One other issue I did kind of see was that the lighting board itself is mounted pretty low, so it intersects with the windows, making the board easily seen. I just thought for a car with a lighted interior, this could have been done a little bit better. Another really minor aspect is the fact that they only used one style roof for every single car in the run. And while this roof panel didn't change between car runs, Union Pacific did eliminate the roof walkway after the C8-9. And cars that were molded for later use, like this one, would not have used the roof walkway. And this isn't really an issue, except for all the roof walks came with the holes pre-drilled for the spare details to add to them if desired. But now instead, my roof is now littered with drilling holes that would be difficult to patch and fix on a model that would never really have them. The operations of this car went very well. The car went through several hours of testing and didn't have any issues with derailing or any other performance hiccups. The metal wheels provide good tracking and the LED lights are bright and consistent. Couplers, trucks, and wheels are all pretty standard for Athern standards with the nicely detailed outside swing arm caboose trucks that have the rotating roller bearing caps and 33-inch metal wheels. One thing that I've continued to harp on is the use of the plastic couplers on a model that's $150.00. But regardless, the couplers were both at the correct height. The value is always pretty subjective to the individual modeler, but there is no arguing this is a very nicely detailed model that features a lot of great features like exterior and interior lighting, but in my opinion does have a few minor issues for such a high price point. And finally, for the last category, just the miscellaneous portion, I thought the interior lights were fairly well done, have a nice golden white color and a relatively good brightness. I noticed that they didn't include any lights in the cupola. That was kind of disheartening, but understandable due to the size. And really, the gut shot was the lack of the supercapacitor for the flicker-free lighting. So any minor loss of track power will turn the lights off in the caboose. Adding up all the points gives a total of 90 out of 100 or a low A rating. And when comparing this car to recently reviewed models, the Athern Genesis ICC C8-9 Caboose lines up about halfway up the list with a rather respectable score. Overall, I thought this Caboose was very nicely detailed and did have some shortcomings along the way. Similar to other Athern products, this car is released with a lot of potential but falls flat in some areas. I thought the external lighting was great and the sound features are a cool aspect to a highly detailed Caboose. But minor design choices, lack of a supercapacitor and subpar couplers on a $150 model will not get you an A-plus rating. Personally, I think this car is great and would recommend it to others that model the Union Pacific in the mid-60s to 1990s. But for the casual modeler, this is a rather expensive caboose and other options may be better suited for you. But that's all I got for you guys. Tell me what you guys think about this caboose. The Maintenance Way Green is very sharp and is a great addition to my growing UP Maintenance Way fleet. Let me know if you guys agree with that. But comment, rate, subscribe, and thanks for watching. See you next time.